Welcome to beautiful Malcolm Island, British Columbia, Canada. This is my first motorcycle camping trip of the season and I'm excited to bring you along. Let's go. Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine. Chances are you already know who I am, but in case this is your first time tuning into my channel, I'm Megan Captain and welcome. This is my Honda CB500X. It's a 2013 model and I've had it for quite a few years. We've done so many trips together, lots of camping trips. Where I am now is a small island called Malcolm Island. It's a really little island off a bigger island called Vancouver Island here in British Columbia, Canada. First, I'm gonna back up and I'll take you back a couple days ago when I first started the trip. It is Friday and I am finishing up work. No more work for the weekend. I'm so excited. I also wanted to point out that I have a little buddy coming along on this trip. His name is Waldo. He's a little black bear. He represents someone I wish could be on this trip but cannot. So I am going to bring Waldo along and uh, you guys can help see if you can spot Waldo in the journey. Where's Waldo? This is the first of many, many ferries that I'm going to be taking on this journey. First, I'm taking a ferry ride over to Vancouver Island where I'm going to spend the night at my friend Victor and Aida's house. I also want to point out that I am all geared up in my Ewol Pro heated vest, which I absolutely love. Thanks to Ewol for sponsoring this video. You should go check out their heated vests and all their other heated goods at Ewol.com. This is the Royston shipwrecks that Vic recommended to check out for the sunset. I'm really excited about this trip and I am so hopeful that I'm gonna see some orcas on this, uh, on this trip. It will be a uh, lifelong dream of mine since I watched Free Willy as a young child. Wow, check out this place. So nice. Thanks Vic for the recommendation. What do you think, Waldo? Is it a nice sunset? Good morning. So it's day two here. I just spent the night at my friend's place. Vic and Aida are amazing. They're actually in the kitchen preparing breakfast right now. And they're also bringing all of the food for us on the trip. I'm going to get them to uh, bring my giant bag as well in their car. So this is a great perk about traveling with someone who's going to be in a car. And then I get to go light and just enjoy the ride. I'm excited. Thanks for coming along. This is Telegraph Hill. It's very quaint. Um, there's a nice boardwalk going around the bay coffee shop, general store, and uh, lots of kayak rentals, if only I had a bit more time. Some interesting World War II history here. Apparently there was a telegraph line that went through this area. Relay watchmen walked the line on a daily patrol protect against enemy sabotage. I am leaving Telegraph Cove. Farewell. Thank you so much. And not the campsite. All right, try again. As it turns out, 
I was going the wrong way and I was on somebody's private property, so. Made it a few wrong turns, but here we are. Check out oceanfront property. So we just arrived at this campsite and I'm setting up my tent and Aida starts screaming, whale, whale. So within just a few minutes of arriving here, we already saw a whale. It's so cool, so cool. There's a whale. No way. Is it? You see the black spot? Yeah. To the left of that. Okay, oh, there it is. It's gone. Tail, tail. So it's, it's not the orca that I was hoping to see, but it is a humpback. And that's pretty cool. We just got here. It's so. a big one, too. Is that? Oh, yeah. That's so cool. So exciting. Was it? Wasn't an orca, but I think this is a good sign. I think if we're already spotting whales, I think that uh, I'm feel I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about seeing orcas on this trip. <laughs> so this is a very muddy, muddy trail. I have to walk along to get to the orca beach, but it's worth it. It's all part of the mission. Super muddy. It was a handy little info board. Hydrophones, underwater microphones, have recorded a variety of sounds made by resident orcas. Echolocation clicks are sonar signals, not unlike bats, that allow whales to find prey and navigate through the underwater world. There you go. So now that we're all experts about orcas, let's go and find some in the wild. Wow, it is so absolutely green and beautiful in this forest. You can tell how much rain it gets around here just by looking at the surrounding area. And I'm feeling super lucky about the weather because I was fully expecting it to be raining the whole time, but it's not, woohoo. This is the whale, orca whale research center. So it stands to reason that the orcas should be around here somewhere. So no orca sadly, but I did run into my friend. So we're gonna try again tomorrow. I'm gonna call it a day. See you tomorrow. Morning. Hi, Waldo. It is another beautiful, beautiful day here. I'm feeling so lucky that the sun is out again today. The plan is I'm going to go into Soantula again and discover a little bit more about the history of this town. I'm just reading here about the history of this island and apparently it was actually created as a utopian community uh, by some Finnish miners. It did not last though. Economic and human disasters plagued the newborn utopia. If there's anything that traveling around the world has taught me, it's that there is no perfect place. But this island in its current state might come pretty close with its stunning views, friendly people, and thriving art scene. I stopped off at this cute little cafe and met a fellow traveler from Finland. Uh, my name is Ville. My name is Ville. <laughs> Could you teach me a little bit of Finnish? Maybe, like, welcome, welcome to Sointula. Tervetuloa uh, Sointulaan. Oh, that was a lot harder than I thought. I was expecting something simple. Okay, let's break that down. How do you say welcome? Terve. Terve. Tuloa. Yeah, basically that means welcome. Terve Tula. So Intula has a number of really neat little artist studios and gift shops, such as this one, Sedna Designs, and we're gonna go look what they got inside. The owner of Sedna Design Studio also has this beautiful garden and apparently there's a motorcycle somewhere in the yard. I think that she's living my future dream. I think I'm going to become a jewelry maker with a garden and uh, old motorcycles to restore. All right, 
tonight. We are going to check out the motorcycle. This is the Yamaha XS750 1981, and it's been fully restored. As much as I enjoyed visiting Sowentula, it was time to get back to base camp to continue my mission to spot some orcas. We've been out here for a while and sadly no luck again. So we're gonna try one last time tomorrow morning and if not, then I guess I'll just have to come back on another trip. We made soup. Ooh. This supposed to be the soup ramen. Is <laughs> ramen and this and that. Looks Fancy. Yes. Smoked tofu, veggies. Yes. Good Not job, me. you guys. It has been another beautiful day. I'm about to throw in the towel soon, but first I'm gonna enjoy a little bit of this fire here and do some reading and unwinding. So tomorrow is the last opportunity to spot the orcas. Tomorrow morning before we head out, wish me luck. Good morning. I'm out here at 6 a.m. It's my last chance to see the killer whales this morning. It is perfect. It's so calm, it's so clear, it's so beautiful. It's so cold though. These are my heated gloves. They're battery operated glove liners. And of course, my heated vest, which I wear on and off the bike. It's so, so great. It plugs into the battery of the bike and also has the external battery pack, which I have here in my pocket. I don't see any whales yet. I wish I had more time. Unfortunately, I have a ferry to catch, 7.30 ferry to catch, so I don't think I can stick around much longer. I'm gonna go pack up my tent and everything, and if I have a little more time left, then I'll come back and take one last look. Farewell, orcas. I know you are out there. I just didn't see you this time, but next time, next time I will. We managed to pack up our campsite this morning and catch this really early morning ferry. We're going to an island called Alert Bay and there's a lot of indigenous history there and we're going to go to a First Nations museum and uh, check, out, check out that island. Welcome to Alert Bay, home of the killer whales. I'm just reading the signboard here and it's describing that the site behind me, which looks so beautiful and peaceful, was in fact a residential school between 1929 and 1974. 200 First Nations children were taken from their families and forced to go to these schools. They were robbed of their culture. They weren't allowed to speak their language. Many of them were not allowed to see their families. Just horrible, horrible things done in the name of the Catholic religion. It's such a beautiful display of resilience here at the center. Many of the artifacts and cultural items were actually removed and taken away and put on display in museums around the world, but it's really special that they could acquire many of those items that were taken and display them for visitors like myself to learn all about. So I am heading back to the ferry for yet 
another ferry ride, and then tomorrow, back to Vancouver. I was sitting on the ferry, reflecting on all the things I had learned at the Mista Cultural Center, and an indigenous man came up and greeted me. My name is Megan, by the way, and you are Larry. Nice to meet you. Larry Joseph is an elder from a nearby town. He shared with me some of the painful experiences he endured at a residential school as a child. He explained that for years he suffered in anger, but how he remarkably has healed from the past and no longer harbors any resentment because his faith has given him the ability to forgive. I asked Larry if he would be willing to teach me a phrase in Kwakwala, the very language that he was forbidden from speaking as a youth. It's a, a gift for your, your granddaughter. It came with me my whole trip and I took pictures with it along the way, but I'm wondering if your granddaughter would like it. It's, <laughs> and that's a, just a symbol of our friendship now. So next time when I see you, we'll have to come and visit the bear. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your story with me. Meeting Larry ended up being the best part of the whole trip. It reminded me of why I love to travel. Seeing beautiful places is great, but it's connecting with people and their stories that truly fuels my adventures. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this motorcycle camping trip with me. I had so much fun and um, I really enjoyed sharing the experience with you. If you haven't already subscribed, that is the best way you can support my content. Also hit the little bell button too, so you will always be notified when I post new content. And if you're interested, you can follow me on Instagram as well, at Megan Katine. That's where I'm the most active and I post a lot of day-to-day -day things about my trips and, and my life and so on. So if you are interested, that's where you'll find me most of the time. Um, thanks again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this motorcycle trip with me. Until next time.